Masters week. Actually, the Masters start tomorrow, so the weekend starts tomorrow. Uh, Kaya took her sweet time, so I apologize for being late. Wagman is joining me as always. How's it going? It's Masters week. I've been able to focus on nothing else for the last three days. So here we are. Uh, we have so much to talk about this morning. We do. I want to take one moment to victory lap my Akshay outright. Uh, very excited to see what you think about him heading into this week. Apparently, you know what I heard right before uh, jumping on here? His shoulder dislocates all the time. Like, very casual thing. Like, it's a, it's a, he's one of those kids. He's just like a lanky kid, and his shoulder comes out sometimes. He claps too hard, thumbs up, and it pops out. Yeah, I, I, I wonder what that must be. You know, like, I, you got to wonder uh, if he was in a lot of pain, um, you know, coming off the 18th green, realizing he just popped his shoulder out after. And then he has to go back and play a playoff hole. Um, I don't think I would be able to do that. But, yeah, I mean, props to you. Um, yeah. The only one of us that's hidden outright this year. Uh, that, that needs to change. It's going to change this week. It's going to change. Just 65 to 1 was very nice. A little bit difficult here. We do have Scotty in the field, but we'll get right into it. I feel like at this point, it's Wednesday morning, and everyone has heard everything that they could possibly hear about the Masters. So I think we should just go right into Smash or Pass. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's jump right in here. First one, Figala. T20 plus 160 smash your pass. Yeah, this is a massive, this is a smash all the way for me. Um, now, you know, you know, disclosure is that I have had this um, for a couple of weeks now. I got it at plus 200. His odds have gone down uh, for the top 20 since then, but I still like plus 160 a lot. I even took uh, top 10 plus 425 a couple of weeks ago as well i mean his he matches up so well here he placed t9 yeah. or placed ninth last year had that incredible chip in on 16 um just one of the like more ready young players in the field i know we typically frown on guys who are you know within their first three starts at this event but something tells me the gala is ready to turn it up a notch this week so i mean the approach game's immaculate the short game rocks. His putting is terrific. And he's finally turned his driver into a weapon for him. Uh, he's gained off the tee in each of the last six events for him. So uh, I don't think there's many weaknesses in his game. Um, if there is, it's that he tends to hit the ball from uh, left to right off the tee instead of the right to left that you typically want. But that fade will come in handy when he gets onto the fairway. So not too worried about that. And if you have watched me for a little bit of time, I have always said I have thought that the gala's first win was going to come on a big stage like this. I have actually yep. bet him outright. That was my first click um, outside of, you know, the horrible futures bets that I have. Um, I got it 60 to one. I see it down in some books to 40 to one. There's still 55 to one out there. I'm smashing this all day. If you can't quite get there, I like the plus 650 for him to be top five as well. Very quietly, like the way people want speak to be creative nowadays is what Figala does now. And I mm -hmm. think that this, this course just sets up really, really well for him. Um, approach everything you said, like ball striking is good. He keeps trending up with his putting, which again, here, we don't care as much about putting either. As long as his driver isn't like super erratic, I think the guy could contend here. Yeah, I I absolutely agree. And I, I feel like there's a comparison to speed to be made. They're both have extremely exaggerated pre-shot routines. Um, yeah. you know, Thigal with his, his putting routine where he just like stretches out like randomly before he puts sometimes, uh, you know, speed with his, um, his, his driver motion sometimes. So, uh, I definitely think there's a nice comparison between the two. It wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me to see Thigal go out there and win. I don't think he's going to, I, I just think the top of the field is too strong. And there's a couple other guys in that, you know, 50, 60 to one range that I focused on instead, but I definitely see where you're getting at that. 
There's also a couple babies that could possibly be on the way for Burns and Scheffler that could eliminate uh, two of the guys at any moment. But right. Gala did have a top 10 as debutant last year. So I like it. I'm smashing this all day. Uh, yeah. Next one up, Justin Thomas, also top 20, plus 140. Where are you at here? All right. So I really wanted this to be like a, a good pick for me. Like, you know, we finally saw him get back to some run of form. Um, you know, kind of looked like the yips of last year were gone. But how are you going to fire your caddy a week before the Masters and then expect people to rely on you for the Masters? Um, doesn't I, I don't know anything about his new caddy minister. Um, I really just never heard of him before. I have to look some stuff up. But at face value, this is a pass for me. Um, the number's nice. The number's much better than what it was. Like the number's been sinking like a rock. He's now down to 40 to one. You can get it 45 in some places, you know. So there, there's an argument to be had that this is a bet the number type of play, um, which we find, you know, in some cases, in some cases it works out. I just don't know if that's one of these cases with JT. Like he just looks like th this, it's a perfect storm of bad for him. Um, you know, last few results have not been great. Uh, the caddy issues are there. The recent, you know, is the fire still there for JT? That's what, that's what I really want to know. So, uh, I'm fine being off of JT as a whole this week. If he surprises and, you know, makes me look like a fool, then I'm the fool. And, you know, he's, he's great again, but scrambling off tight lies which you have all the way around augusta not great 72nd in the field uh worries about his off the t play outside of the top 50 in this field you know is is was the miscut last year just a fall off for him because he's had great results here in the past so yeah. is it a one-off or are we realistically you know experiencing the decline in form of justin thomas uh, you know, now that he's kind of starting to hit the uh, the 30 year mark for him. I think the only reason why I'm starting to be kind of enticed by this, which I, this number actually is not like plus 140. Eh, the new cat, it's, it's not like super sexy, it, it's no. fine. But I think it's gonna get lower by tomorrow, too. It's probably yeah. gonna get lower. I think people are going to start picking up on no one's on him. And I noticed this mm -hmm. trend happen uh, around this part of the week where now that no one's talking about him, we want to talk about him. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't shock me um, if this number moves. Kind of why it's enticing for me, but I was out on JT going into this week. I'm going to stay that way. Um, wish him the best of luck because I would love to see JT get back in better form back in a form where he's not someone that I want to like punch in the face the entire time watching him golf. Like some of that we, I miss watching JT play good golf. All right. Yep. I've got, I've got another top 20 for you here. Smasher pass Henley top 20 plus 180. So Henley's one of those guys that I was like looking at, but I wasn't quite sure of how he fit into things. Um, I ran models with and without Bermuda grass on them and he really kind of did not do well in my Bermuda model. And, um, he ranked all the way to, or sorry, in my without Bermuda model, um, which is kind of interesting, you know, given, you know, the importance that you place or lack of importance that you place on, you know, the putting surface for the masters, given the uh given the importance of everything else i'm not sure like we we saw the t4 last year like played really well down the stretch but he was just unconscious around the greens last year in route to that t4 finish um played really well in the final round as well I, i'm a little bit concerned with uh you know some of the recent things that i've seen from him we had we've seen him be a little bit uneven in the last uh few events for henley so I want to see what he can do. I'm always hesitant to bet on guys that, you know, are coming in, um, missing the cut in some of the biggest tournaments that we saw him miss the cut at the players. We saw him follow it up with a, 
with uh, you know fourth place finish at Valero. He was also fourth at Arnold Palmer. Um, the Genesis is something I'm looking at as well. It's a pretty close comp course. Finished top 24 there, but you know his skill around his his gain around the greens is minimal. Uh, he's lost in three of his last five around the greens. He's lost on approach in two of his last four. Uh, so he's a little bit uneven coming into this tournament. So I think I'm gonna pass this. Um, you know, he's he's a little bit of a swingy guy for me, and so much can depend on how he plays around the greens that I'm not willing to chance it at a place like Augusta where that can literally sink your tournament. I am. I'm so fucking in on Henley. I am so in. Um, I think, you know, you look at his solo, what was he in fourth last week? Solo four last week. He had almost two strokes on the field. Like he has solid history here. Top 15, three times, T4 last year. And I think that this is a case of like, recent form meets course history so i'm all in on this um i like him as a long shot as well but long shots don't really win here so it's not as sexy or fun to say that but a top 20 at plus 180 very much in on that i saw trending in the am asking about clark 45 to 1 maybe my favorite outright i made da 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 discuss I want to ask you about some of these uh, guys making their debut at Augusta National because there is some very attractive names. Um, Clark is one of them. You've got Ludwig. Uh, you've got who else? Is Pavon, McCarthy, Yeager, Knapp, Hojegaard, and then uh, Akshay as well because he made himself uh, in, got himself into the field. Do any of those names interest you? Yeah, so I actually did bet Clark to be the top debutant here. Um, you know, and look, the way I see it is that Ludwig should not be favored at this event. I, I think, and look, I, I told you this multiple times this year. I think Ludwig is way, way, um, you know, overpriced uh, at all these events. We have to remember that, you know, major debutants just don't do as well. Like they have an average finish of just outside the top 20. Uh, you know, Augusta is really hard for first timers, mm -hmm. but you know, when we, when we get into the category of nobody seeing Augusta national, I wanted to fall to the guy who's been in the best form recently. And for me, that's Wyndham Clark. Um, you know, the, the performance of the players, the performance just over this year as a whole, he's been in such good form, you know, coming into this realistically, he is playing like a top five top three player in the world and i just can't say that about ludwig um you know looked meh at valero last week uh at a tournament that realistically he should have been you know in the top five at the very least um and just just falters way too much i just think ludwig is up and down and i think he suffers from roy mcelroy syndrome um, at a place like this where he's just going to be too aggressive and Augusta National is famous for bait, uh, preying on people's egos and baiting people into making mistakes, um, you know, and because the littlest misses will punish you. And I think one big skill around the greens is going to play into that with him. Uh, it's not as good. I think Wyndham is much better around the greens. He's a much better putter. Um, I personally think he's just as good, if not better, on approach. And his off the tee game is perfectly fine. Um, you know, Ludwig will have the advantage with the shot shaping, but I don't put that into play as much when taking into account everything else. So Wyndham Clark was the guy I bet plus 330 on DraftKings uh, to be the top debutant. Um, I definitely think he should be favored here. I wouldn't rule out someone like, you know, a Jake Knapp or, or a Pavon just randomly having like an incredible week here. Yes, yeah. I, I what, know. what is Pavon's number? Do you have it in front of you? Pavon is 14 to 1, top debut time. Yeah, I'm kind of obsessed with that. Like, I think that's like a, it's not like a, maybe like a unit. I don't know. It could be fun. He's someone that, you know, he won and then kind of didn't really play all the terms they could. He kind of mm -hmm. went abroad and did his thing. But I could see mm -hmm. him come in here, talk about ego, but he's not a guy that ego is an issue. It's a pretty solid fit for him. I could see him being a sneaky guy to play very well. Um, but I think Clark and, uh, 
they were both like they also are very good fits here right like you think about their length hard five scoring everything about it kind of lines up with this you know like longer challenging courses so it's, it's a pretty sexy uh like debutante class i just don't know how much i can get behind backing these guys like i think Pavon will be like a little sprinkle I might get there with Aberg, but the cold surf sore yesterday was stressing me out. Like, I think he's stressed out. Did you see it on his lip? No, I did not see it. I think it. he's stressing. I think he's stressing. I will so, say a number that really intrigues me is Austin Eckroat um, oh, I'm, at 18. Oh, I'm, yes. Rated out pretty well in my model for me. Uh, the off the tee numbers worry me a little bit, but the approach game is really, really nice. Uh, it is just nice. one, Just one down here in Florida. Mm -hmm on Bermuda at the Cognizant is a very, very good ball striker. One of the better ball strikers on tour. Mm -hmm. um, his scrambling off short grass is nice. 19th in this field. Bogey avoidance, uh, 18th in this field. So, you know, and these are all in diff very, very difficult conditions with windy, with windy weather. Um, I mean, I think the Honda is a perfect example of, you know, a less hard version of Augusta. Um, you know, obviously without the length, but, uh, you know, wind always comes into play there and it's difficult conditions and you really have to crush the par fives there. So, um, I do like Ekro for that reason. I think I might sprinkle on him at 18 to one top debutant. So that okay. would be my play there, but I do also have an outright on Wyndham Clark. I do think that you if do. a first timer wins it, I think it's probably him. Um, I, will I, I say just... This feels like a year that one of them could win it. Yeah, because we haven't seen this many like actual winners in the field that are debuted inside of of the guys there. Ludwig is a winner. Wyndham Clark is a winner. Akshay is a winner. Jaeger is a winner. Pavone is a winner. Knapp is a winner. Dunlap's a winner. Ekro's a winner. Malnati is a winner. So we typically do not see all of these guys having experience on the PGA tour, being able to win and place highly at a consistent level. And I know, I know what they say. It's Augusta, you know, it's, it's a different challenge, but truly is it really, it is a different challenge, but any of these guys can go unconscious for a week slash weekend and get it done. So uh, I am betting that if one of them does, it is Wyndham, but yeah, he's my pick here for top debut. I don't know what it is. Maybe it was that shirt that he was wearing that he like even tweeted out. He's like, oh, wait till everyone what? sees what I'm wearing tomorrow. Like, I don't want to see what you're wearing today if that's what you wore yesterday. Like at that point, <laughs> I'm not interested. Um, one more smasher, two more smasher passes here. Uh, we got a matchup. Rory over Xander, minus 125. Yeah. So, all right. So I, I went into this. You know, no, no, knowing no. that I like the Xander. Wrong side of this, aren't you? I went into this knowing that I wanted Xander. Um, okay. I came out of it knowing that no, I no, wanted no. Xander. Okay. <laughs> so last night I, I had a thought, and uh, it, it was a scary thought. It was uh, basically, what if this is the year that Rory gets the monkey off his back? And wins and completes the Grand Slam. And, you know, it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when. And no. <laughs> once Tiger says something like that, you know, you the, the thought automatically goes into everyone's head. Uh, because Tiger not doesn't mine. say things like that. Not well, mine. you're a hater, he so. Said, he also said he is uh, not having sex right now. So I, which I don't believe. So I, I don't know if we can believe Tiger right now. And everything I like mean, that. the guy is dedicated. I, I can only, I can only tell you that. Um, <laughs> but I think Xander wins this matchup. Um, like I said, Rory has the tendency to go uber, uber aggressive at Augusta. It's very much cost him the past. I don't pay attention to his late weekend runs. Um, you know, that land him inside the top 10, inside the top five, because simply they just don't matter. Because at the grand scheme of things, he's already out of it by then. Missed the cut last year, had a perfect range session and practice rounds the days before. 
This year, he has taken a completely different tact. He's come in. He's been quiet. He had like a five-minute press conference yesterday. You know, he's he's subdued. He's all business. Mm -hmm. And I just think this completely backfires on him because I think he's just in over his head. Uh, and plus, Xander's playing the best golf of his life. Um, it is very, very true that if this was not Xander, I would probably pick Rory because I do think Rory finishes high again. I just don't think at the end of the day it's going to matter because Xander should be there all tournament long. Top 10 merchant. We love we love Xander on this show. Xander, Xander's our guy. Top 10 always. We love Xander top 10. Yeah. Yes. For, that's it. That's that's where I draw. I've, I've uh, fixed my relationship with him by just betting top 10. Yes. Well, I am still uh, damaged and deranged, and I am betting him outright as well. Um, no, you're because, not. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. At 14 um, to 1, or what did you get it at? No, I, I got 19 to 1. Okay, because um, 14 to 1 is crazy. Yeah, 14 to 1 is psychotic. It's like it's like betting Scotty plus 350. Um, well, no, we're not doing that. Yeah, but you're you're okay. you're nuts. Um yeah. you know, look, it, it, it is Xander. He's finished top ten in six of his last eight tournaments, three top tens and two top three finishes in his last five masters. He's simply just playing the best golf in the world of anyone not named Scotty Scheffler. And yes, that includes Joaquin Neiman, because if you bet on Joaquin Neiman to win the Masters, you're a fish. That's that's just my that's just my take. He's never gonna win a major because he plays the majors like crap. Um, you know, the only thing I can say for Rory is that his iron game finally looks good. He started off this year, uh, I believe it was like 160th in iron play through the first like five or six events he played. And he finally put out a good iron performance last week. I think it was one of his best rounds since 2019 with the irons. And, but I just, I just think Xander edges him a little bit here. Um, so I did take plus 115. You can get that on hard rock. It's down to plus 110 now, but I still like it. I will let everyone know right now. Rory is not winning the Masters. Um, this will be his 16th appearance at the Masters. Like, it's just, you know, I tweeted about it. Like, you you let your ex come back 15 times. Like, what is going to change the 16th? I just don't, I just don't see it happening. Um, I like Xander still. Did you take him top 10 as well? Yes. Yes. Plus 150. Okay. Um, yeah. Any thoughts on, I'm all in on Xander. I mean, I think outside of Scotty, like you find the the staff, he's, he's right behind Scotty. Yeah. He's, uh, he's there in, he's there in everything. The only detractor against Xander is he doesn't play well in the wind because he hits it very, very high. The only detractor so, is he just needs to stop like being a loser and just <laughs> win is what he Finish did. him! Just Finish it! Just like win. Finish How about we just win? The course history, awesome. Top five, yeah. three of those last four starts. Like you name it, there everything he pops up every time. I do my little, do my little model. He my little model. Oh, Xander Shopley, number two, number Probably three, more. number he does not, he has not popped out of the top four of my model since the season started. So yeah. I want to ask you about one more guy. Any thoughts, feelings, questions, concerns on Fitzpatrick, who I don't think is getting talked about enough? So we talked about this a, lot, a little bit last night, and yeah. Fitzpatrick actually came out pretty decently high in my model. Um, I like him a little bit. I like him a little bit better uh, without taking into account the Bermuda Greens than I do taking into account Bermuda Greens ranked ninth in that model. Uh, the short game is absolutely immaculate. Ranks first in strokes gain short game in this field, which comprises putting and short game. His bogey avoidance is number one as well. Um, top or top 10 in par five birdie or better percentage, which is uber, uber important here. Uh, the approach is, is going to be what gets me. Um, we've seen a couple, couple top performances over the last a uh, couple of weeks with him, which is giving me some renewed confidence. But overall, it's it's been a very uneven year. He somehow managed to miss the cut at both the Genesis and the Arnold Palmer, uh, which is not great uh, when you're taking into account, you know, how important the Genesis might be to Augusta's success. 
did finish 10th here last year, did finish 14th in 2022, um, 34th in 2021. So, you know, there's some openings there for Fitzpatrick. You know, he hasn't missed a cut since his Masters debut in 2014. So I do think there is a possibility that he comes out, plays really well. But Fitzpatrick is one of those guys that can really play himself into trouble. And ultimately, at Augusta, that really fucking worries me. It does, but like <laughs> the last two times we saw him, one last week, T10, we saw him at the players, solo five. Like he has been trending in the direction that I want to see Fitzpatrick yeah. going into Augusta as someone that has strong course history here. It's also being overlooked by the public, which I kind of am obsessed with a little bit. So what do you think the best way to play Fitzpatrick if you were going to go about it? I've already played him at top 20, but I think so, first round leader is an interesting look. But um, I, I have to check something. Where is it? Uh, what is it? If I had to bet him... Like, and I thought he would like really do well. I would probably go to top Englishman. Mm. That's probably the way that I would play him. Was that, was two, it, to was, one. Mm-hmm. two to one. Uh, okay. That's what, that's what I would play. If, if I was interested in playing Fitzpatrick, I would yeah. probably eschew the top 20 entirely. And I would focus on something more in like the thirties, you know, twenties to thirties. And I, I would take him, you know, over Fleetwood, over Hatton, uh, J Rose and Willett. And I would take him to finish, you know, as the top Englishman there. That would be my play. I love that. I agree with you. I have the top 20 already locked in, so we'll leave it there. I think top Englishman is a great call. I also think he's one of the fun, like one of the guys that you can add to like make the cut parlays. Like he's mm-hmm. a nice little addition that you can throw in there. Yeah, he does not miss the cut here usually. Like, you know, yeah. his earlier season before, results is not. Look at the history. There's things mm-hmm. to be concerned about, but every fucking week with him, there's something mm-hmm. to be concerned about. Um, the dreaded Scotty Scheffler. Uh, I mean, not for me because I hope he wins. I would love for him to win. Um, is Scotty Scheffler winning the Masters? Uh, if his wife does not go into labor, I, I would imagine that he makes it. Um, you know, I, I'm waiting until we bring up a couple of things later in the show to for my Scotty, uh, okay. my Scotty opinion. But yes, I do think there is a somewhat of a 20 percent chance that Scotty wins the, the Masters. I was looking and uh, we'll get into our triple D's after this, but I was looking Last 18 months, his worst his worst finish was T31. Oh, don't steal don't steal my stat like that. Sorry. I have a, T31. I have a great stat. What? And yeah, he's he just to the new putter. Sorry if that was an awful uh, noise for everyone that's listening. Um also drop in the chat some of your best bets for the masters because yes. I would I would love to bounce them off of you guys. Um also has a missed a cut here, finish inside top 30 each of his last each of the last four years. And since since he switched that putter, he has gained strokes putting in his last mm-hmm. start. Yes, sure has. So the only thing that can stop Scotty now is uh, Baby Scheffler. Yeah. Uh, you think he would yeah. actually, do you think? No. Who would actually withdraw, Burns or Scotty? Because it would definitely be Scotty. Burns. Burns. Really? I, I, I think Burns is much more religious and um than Scotty is. No. No, you think Scotty's more religious? I can't believe Meredith isn't gonna be there. That's a whole another conversation for another neither day. is Sam neither is Sam's wife. They're yeah, both gone. Sam's wife is not the number one golfer in the world. Well, neither or is Sam's Scotty's not. wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know what I meant. Uh, Take him for my my dad. Like I might take him as my one and done. I took Scotty as my it. dad bet. I took Scotty as my dad it. bet. Is it? I took Scotty. Scotty. Scotty top five is my dad bet. Okay. It's What's the fucking dog? Catalina wine mixer. Scotty Scheffler is not withdrawing from the Masters. I will quit betting. Uh, Brian Kirshner said this, but I will echo him. 
I will quit betting if Scotty Scheffler withdraws from the Masters. It's you not why, happening. You want to know why Gershner said that? Is because he has a single bullet this week. And it's I know. Awesome. I saw. So he will not. Yeah, he, he has JT, po- he, JT Poston 340 to 1 and Scotty Scheffler. Yeah. He texted me at like, I don't even know what time. I, I was already asleep because I'm a fucking old lady on Sunday night. It was like 10 o'clock. He's like, yo. I didn't answer until the morning. And it was just like, I bet Scotty. I was like, I knew you'd come around. I knew I'd get you there. Um, I mean, even I, I got I, there. there I it's to... Scotty's thing to lose. It, re- it really is. Like, he's just, he's playing like a man possessed until he does not play well. And we're moving into, we're moving into dad bet territory here. So uh, I'm going to start there. Just the, the form is there. Everything is there for Scotty right now. He has he, he, this this is the craziest stat he has placed in the top five in 14 of his last 20 tournaments and everyone wonders it's why just an insane i'm up i actually need to go back and i'll tell everyone next week what it is but i just keep rolling rolling it over and i mean we're up money i'll tell you that much yeah I, I I agree. Like he's just, like three of his last six majors, top five. He's the best ball striker and TD Green player in the world, bar none. Like he's he's getting it there. I see you subtly. It's not even subtly. It's just blatant. Scotty Scheffler um, is the dad. You know what I love? Yeah. They asked his uh, caddy what they were working on this week. You know what he said? Nothing. <laughs> He fucking said nothing. I'm like, I, that's, that, I mean, my job, that's crazy. He said nothing. He's just the most like nonchalant, nonchalantly elite guy, like prime tiger. Like you had tiger just like stone faced staring at the media is like, I'm going to fucking win this. And Scotty's just like, yeah, you know, I could win it. I could lose it. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not out here working on anything. I'm just going to come out here and fucking dominate. Like th- yeah, that's just that's that, just Scotty's feeling. Like. Starting to know, like he's getting a little bit of swag in his like little pep in his step. Start, his starting to look like Dustin Johnson in the way he walks. Yeah, you know, with, the, with yeah. the swagger. Like the putter just might not fucking matter at this point. Like it, it's. Oh, it, I mean, but it's been fine. I mean, he's yeah. gaining strokes since he switched it. The, that's probably what's wrong with my putter lately. I should yeah, just... we're going back to we're going back to the surface that Scotty was comfortable with this putter on, uh, which is why I am literally like not even counting the the Houston Open issues with the putter in you know in my research at all. He won two he won two events with the bet on bent grass with that putter. We're going right back to bent grass here at Augusta. Um you know this this is the place where we watched Scotty make nine footer after nine footer after nine footer after nine footer in 2023. Like I'm not worried at all about this man's putting one bit. If his if his T to green game is on, he's gonna be your next green jacket winner. And I also think there's an angle. Here I go with my vibe things. Um, if the baby's coming soon. Shouldn't shouldn't we get a win in so that if we need to take a little bit of time off, we can? Yeah, I don't know. Absolutely, I think, I think absolutely it's full makes throttle. sense. Yeah, I think it's full thought. Throttle. Yeah. Um, my, there's no chance that a it, there's no chance that an in in contention Scotty withdraws from the Masters. I I will just end my spiel by saying that I disagree. Less than zero chance. I think if Jesus tells him to, he will. Um, no, that's just not how this works. I'm telling you, he will. He's that, like, I think he's that kind of a human, which we can just blame it on Meredith and the baby. It doesn't matter. It's not going to be Scotty's fault, I'll tell you that much. Um, what is your done bet? My done bet is Brooks Kepka. Okay. Brooks, Ke- Brooks Kepka realistically should have been your winner of the 2023 Masters. Um, I will not put all of that on me, but I did have John Rahm and do a bunch of voodoo dances to make sure that Brooks mm-hmm. Kepka blew the lead last year. So uh, any Brooks ticket holders and about four of my closest friends uh, cursed me out spectacularly last year when, when that happened. Um, but I do think Kepka is going to come back just revenge on the brain. Uh, he's played well, you know. I'm, I'm not even thinking about live Miami. Hit four of his other five, uh, like, yeah, yeah. Like he's he's just a big game hunter. 
he he's that kind of guy. Like he locks in and he comes here and he's just like, I'm Brooks. This is what I do. I chase majors. Like that's all he cares about. That's all he ever cared about. So it feels like the live guys and not to get like too controversial, obviously, because we don't do that in the show, but it, it feels a little bit different this year with these guys. Like, I feel like they don't care about live as much as they maybe did. Like, it feels like, like, Cam Smith is like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, I'm sick. I'm not going to play. Brooks, you know, didn't play that great going in, but I guarantee he has a good Masters. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. I, I think Brooks really wants to win a green jacket. I think he's been really, really freaking close before. Uh, he plays the ball well here. His, um, you know, people will say, you know, the fact that he does not shape the ball that much is just straight power fade all the way for him. You know that yeah. that can hurt him, but I'm just I'm not I'm not too worried about it. Like his game is just so electrically good that he should be there. You know, a hundred percent of the time. Um, you know, I we're obviously not giving a discount. Could literally just be Harmon pissing him off. Yeah, that that'll be With the wiggle. You know, last year, last year it was Cantlay. This year, uh, yeah, they're definitely Cantlay. testing his patience. They know yeah. what they're doing, but I mean, he rated out. He was what eleventh or tenth in my model. Yep, might as well. So tenth, yeah. tenth without Bermuda mm-hmm. and twenty um, first with 14th, Bermuda. But I'm not worried about yeah, it. like there's things to like, and I think Brooks can always contend. Um, so you've got your done bet is Brooks. Your dad mm-hmm. bet is Scotty to win. Uh no, top five. Oh, top five. I was like, wait, yes. I don't think that works. Right. Mine is, I'm going to do Scotty as my done. The guy at top 20 as my dad. Who is your dart throw for the week? So I, I have two guys that I, I consider here. And I added one guy like really late last night because it's just like a wild number that it's gotten to the point that it's gotten to. But the first one is Shane Lowry at 60 to 1. And Shane Lowry, Masters. By the time you finish talking, I'm going to end up fucking doing it. And I don't want to. I don't bet him. I don't like him. I don't like him. We've went over this. When I talk about Shane Lowry, it works out. (laughs) We saw this the last couple months. Shane Lowry, he's got the history here. Four top 25 finishes. Approach game and ball striking are both top 10 in this field in the different scoring. He's an excellent excellent win player like one of the better win players on tour he ranks second in bogey avoidance in heavy win conditions um he just really wants to win the green jacket like that he just that's just what he wants to do like he said he wants to win a green jacket and i'm absolutely with him on that so you know he's just he's the only irishman i trust right now and i'm just gonna vibe with that like I'm not trusting. I trust him as an Irishman over Rory right now. So give me Shane Lowry as my yeah. dart 60 to one. Can we get a matchup on those two? Cause I am all the way in. Sick. That's a very interesting so sick. look. Um, so sick. What is Shane Lowry's uh, odds to be the top bar? Let's see what we can get on, on Shane Question. Lowry here. You know, what I think my dart throw is going to be while I look this up. What? You're going to hate it. But Probably. one of my followers went to Lowry's maybe, plus five fifty to be the top. I, uh, top I, don't, in I heard enough. I don't need to hear anything else. That's how I'm betting Lowry. Done. Okay. Okay. Because then I get to like buy Rory. Yeah. It's an anti-Rory thing. Wow, it's a pro right. Lowry thing. Right. Um, right. One of my followers though was at the practice run yesterday and said mm-hmm. said DJ. Said DJ was striking the ball real good. So listen. Does DJ what? qualify as a long shot? Isn't he like 35 to 1? I don't know. Is he? I have to look. He he should be. He, sh- he should be considered. He's a long 40 shot. to 1. 40 to 1. Oh, it's not a long shot then. I gotta give you something better than that. I don't know Henley, but what's the Figal is only at 60 to 1. You want a long shot, long shot? It's your show. I know. Well, <laughs> I feel like long shots don't win, so it's not that. I, I have, I, I have 
I know of a know? long shot. You told me literally this morning, and I don't know why you haven't said his name yet. Oh. Adam Scott. Oh, duh. Yes, Adam Scott. What is he sitting at now? 75. Done. Adam Scott. <laughs> if Adam Scott is locked in, like, I mean, is he really 75 to 1? He is. He's yeah. a great DFS play this week, by the way. He is. You know who's also okay. a good DFS play this week? Yeah. Cameron Young. Okay. Is he your first round leader? I'll take one. Um, I'll take, I'll take yes. one last bet from you before. Yes, he, he will be a, a first round leader play for me, but he's also a DFS play and he'll probably probably sneak into my top uh top twenty or thirty, depending on numbers for that. I haven't really looked. Um, but still have, that's still have about 60 too. bets to make. I still have about 60 bets to make before oh, yeah. Masters start and tomorrow morning. Yeah, I will be putting all of it on Picket. I have two videos coming out too with some more of my plays. If you haven't joined the pool yet, go do that. There is like almost 50 people in it right now. Did we run through? So minimally hurt, what, he break his thumb? Right. Broke his thumb, dropped a dumbbell on his thumb while working out last week. That's just bad timing. Like, he was able to play practice very, round, yeah, pay three, but, like, just how, how are you doing that? How are you doing that the week before the Masters, bro? Like, come on. You, you got to cook out there. You, you, like, you're not going to be able to cook. Yeah, Nothing. I don't know. He hasn't been doing a lot of cooking anyway, so I don't know if I was uh, betting on it him that much and then steve kind of dropped what his his wrist has been he has a tendon issue that he's going to address at the end of the season bro he's he's had that for like um two months he's, like um, yeah fine i don't know why we're why it's becoming a are you a, on did you end up did you end up betting speed i didn't yet but i do have a 50 dollar bonus bet that i think i have to i have to do can it. we can we talk about neiman before we get out of here like yeah, we can talk about him. Can, he, I, can you I like try like he like, was my guy, and I feel like the world took him from me. He he was also my guy. Like when when he was you know coming in at like forty to one to win regular tournaments and like 65, 70 to one to win majors. But once you start like hyping him up that much, like I just don't see it. Like the guy has zero track record at major championships. Like just. Um, he did well here last year, though. Okay, T sixteen, but that's yeah. his best finish ever at any major. He's missed two of his last three cuts. Well, he's um, barely—I mean, he's barely been able to compete because he decided to fucking go to live so fast. Yeah, but I, he's, I, little, I he's annoying. Like I don't, I don't wait live live results. Like they—they they do nothing for me with Brooks. They do nothing with. You know, for me, with with any yeah. of these, any of the live guys, like the live guys, I pick are on their merits. Like they, they, you know, it, it's it's on their games. I just don't think. God, he was that so he, fucking hot when he was on tour. Still, I'm looking at his past results from that year. Like, he, dude, can fucking play golf. He can. He can definitely. He can definitely play golf. But like major golf. We've we've seen him play major golf like all last year. He missed two of his four major cuts last year and placed thirty second and sixteen in the other two. And like, um, and he like he had a really good putting round at the majors or Masters last year. Like, I don't know. I just don't see it. I just don't see it. Like he's he's lost strokes on approach in three of his last four Masters. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm just a little bit concerned that he's you know it's you know we're just over overrating him extremely extremely heavily like i don't know i don't know the genesis the genesis is an interesting sticking point i think a lot of people are pointing to that and saying okay well he won the genesis he can he can definitely win augusta but i think he was doing very yeah 28 to 1 is too high Oh, 28 that's not, to one is just too high. No, if you're betting him, if you didn't have a future on him, like, or like I betting him there at one point during the week, I think on Tuesday, well, yesterday was Tuesday. Yesterday, I tweeted, I mean, some books had it down to 22 to one. Like, you deserve to get bitch slapped if yeah. you're betting Neiman at 22 yeah. to one. Yeah, that's you true. want you want a player of 
Neiman's caliber that plays almost exactly like Neiman has a lot of the same characteristics as no, Neiman's I'm game, quiet. but at just a much lower number. And honestly, in my mind, just a much better and major ready player. You hate me. Take Will Zalatoris. No, fuck no. I, I knew you were going to say that. Just because they both have string bean legs does not. That's not the only legs. reason. Oh, my God. I would take Neiman over Zalatoris. Uh, you're insane. Want to make that that's side insane. bet? We can. Yes. Yes. Okay. Fine. Yes, yeah. I'll see if I can find a matchup for it. Um, final thoughts. Any, any news that came out that we need to address before we get out of here? Um, no, I, I think we're good for the most part. Um, nothing, if nothing else, I, I just think that I, I think that we shouldn't overrate things too much. I think this is, you know, this is typically just the top of the board event for guys to win. Um, small field doesn't change the fact that Augusta national is very, very, very difficult. The same guys typically contend there every single year. You know, if you're good there once, you'll probably be good there again. So, why if Shane Lowry fucking wins? Bet Patrick Reed, somebody. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I was already pissed off. I was going to pick up, uh, this is like the nonsense. If you're still listening, um, go to my Twitter and sign up for the Masters pool. You pick six golfers, your worst golfer gets dropped, top three pays out. You can enter up to six times. And then little little story here is I went to I get an injury replacement that you can use. Matt Wallace, like, didn't matter if he's in the Masters or not. He got injured. I can use an injury replacement. So I'm like, oh, let me pick up Patrick Reed. Nope. Someone else picked him up. I'm like, Sergio, fine. That was my sign. I didn't want to do it. I'm like, I'll pick up Sergio. Again, Sergio coming in nice, coming and looking. Okay, no, it doesn't, it doesn't fucking matter because the commissioner was like. Actually, someone sent an email 20 minutes before you. Like, fuck my team. It's horrible. I could really use a Spieth or a Day win. Like, I could use a Cole top 10 maybe. Like, give me something to fucking work with because my team is awful. This has been great. He's interesting. He's kind of interesting, but I think he's I know. He's I, knew, I knew if I dropped his name that we were going to have to say. I mean, he rates out pretty well for me, though. What are your thoughts on Harris last, English? What did you do last week? Everyone's like, Jesus, I thought the show was over. Sorry. <laughs> it's not over. It's we could we could talk for three we could talk for three hours. I'm betting, okay, by the way, I'm betting cool. Austin Eckro 200 to one. I have a disease. What did he do last week? Who? Eric Cole? Yes. Um, let me check. I gotta bet Adam Scott while you're looking. I'm I'm betting Austin Eckro, by the way. I have oh yeah, no problems. Uh, he missed the cut last week. Okay, fuck Eric Cole then. Yeah, but the yeah. Eric Cole is the type of guy that'll come into the Masters and end up playing well. Yeah, he'll he'll place like top eight. Um, cool. yeah. Uh, if you do like him, two hundred fifty to one. For uh, what? Twelve hundred outright. Two uh, twelve uh twelve to one for a top ten. He's what outright? Well, two hundred and fifty to one. Okay, so like, are we being disrespectful at that point a little bit? To Eric Cole? No. I don't know. 250 to no. one is crazy. He's never played. He's never played here. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Like There's just some guys we should not bet. Uh, but you should absolutely bet Adam Scott plus 240 for a top 20. That is absolutely something that, that I'm not gonna do a top. I'm gonna do a top wait for a top 40? 20. Okay. I think I can get their top 30. Yeah, plus 105. That's final name, final name, and then I swear we are wrapping it up. I'm expecting everyone that's listening to go join. Final final board. name, um, Bryson DeChambeau. No, final name, he's second in my model. So I don't know. I I can't purchase it. He has like two <laughs> years left to he has been his approach in around the green game just gives me a lot of anxiety also siwoo kim is attending the masters for the first time with his son okay. <laughs> and he, ra and he, 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 ra he ranks seventh players. he ranks seventh in the list of total strokes gained at augusta no, no, no. um over his last like five appearances there's it's like yeah, only yeah. not only those guys who have gained like 16 or more strokes at augusta can win and he's on that list I can't. I can't do it. He's gonna win next week. How about we make next week? Uh, Siwoo. Okay. okay. Two names. I lied. I lied to you. Max Homa. 
In or out? Um, in because he's on part of my take today. Okay, I think I'm in on him. DFS. Oh, he's is he really? Hmm. Yeah, he's on. He's on with Brooks today. Like, him and Brooks. That's where he gets the juices flowing too. He like does enjoy himself a good. And then Tony Finau. Um, always in on Finau at the Masters. I think I'm in too, but starting to get a little bit public. All right, we will get out of here. I'm gonna live stream during some of the tournament tomorrow, Friday and Sunday, not Saturday, because I have my own tea time. And if you haven't joined the pool, Love like a good tea time. I said, join the fucking pool. Take join my money. Join the fucking pool. And good luck betting this week. See you guys.